Welcome to Hanania Theological College. This is Communicative English Skills course. The course code is ENLA101. So welcome to our classroom. Uh, let me introduce with the, second, the first section. So this is week one and lesson one. We will we are going to uh, study skills, English language skills, all the four skills, the listening, speaking, reading, and writing skills. So the course section, which is lesson one, is dedicated to the introduction to communication or introduction to communicative English skills. So let's begin with the course description and course objectives. The course description. This course, Communicative English Skills aims to develop your communicative English skills. It focuses on listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Through various interactive activities and assignments, you will enhance your ability to effectively communicate in English, both orally and in written. The course will also cover grammar, vocabulary to support your language proficiency. So let's go to the course objectives. So, by the end of this course, you will be able to demonstrate improved listening skills in English. You will communicate effectively in spoken English and in various contexts. You will enhance reading comprehension skills in English. You will develop writing skills in English. And finally, you will be able to expand your vocabulary power and apply appropriate grammar structures. So, let's move to the course instructor so the course title is communicative english i as i've already told you and the course code is in lab 101 it's in a 10 weeks course the delivery mode is online and we have given you three credit hours and if it's turned into european credit transfer system it would be six and my name is fakadu angasu or fakadu kananisa angasu so I'm uh, the, the course and instructor for communicative English skills. So let's begin with the course outline. So what are the course outlines which we are going to cover throughout the 10 weeks? So we have provided all the course outlines, the course content is into 10 weeks, which means into 10 sections and 10 lessons. The first week, we will be giving you introduction to communicative English skills, which is exactly this video, which covers course overview and expectations, introduction to effective communication, and diagnosis assignment, assessment that will assess your capacity and it, it will help you to know where exactly you are right now. So on the second week, we'll be going to listening skills. So that's one of the first receptive skills which we're going to study. The, we will see the importance of listening skills, the strategies to develop our listening skills efficiently and effectively and finally we'll be giving you listening comprehension exercises and practices in this section you'll be given about 20 20 20 different activities which helps you to develop your listening skills or your listening capacity moving to the third week we will be given speaking skills and in the same way as we have done with the listening skills we'll be doing and developing fluency and accuracy in spoken english so you, you will understand the differences between fluency and accuracy and pronunciation and intonations. And also we'll be giving you plenty of exercises, including role plays and group discussions of if you are not uh, taking this in, even if you are not taking this course uh, in the classroom, in a physical classroom, you will be assigned in groups wherever you are. So you can have uh, friends or classmates to, sh to, to have conversation, to have dialogues. Because unless otherwise you have somebody to practice with, it will really take you a lot of time to improve your listening and the sp spoken English skills because they are both oral communicative skills. You need to do it in some way, either with your family members or with a phone or WhatsApp and Telegram chat with your friends. So that is assignment that we are be, you are going to be given to develop your listening and speaking activities. So moving to the four weeks, we'll be giving to reading skills so you will be 
learning on reading comprehension strategies. You learn different kinds of readings like skimming, scanning, and in-depth reading. And then we will be uh, helping you to uh, learn how to you develop your vocabulary while you are reading. And reading comprehension activities or exercises will be giving different reading texts so that you will understand and answer the questions that follow from the reading text. And the, the, four, the fifth week, you will be given the fourth skill, that's the listen, writing skills. So in this section, you will be learning how to develop your writing skills in English, and you will learn how to sentence construction and paragraph development and writing exercises and assignments. And this was the first section, and when we come to the second section, we'll be dealing with uh, vocabulary, grammar, speaking, and writing practices. So from week six to week 10, you will be given uh, different ex ex exercises, which focuses on vocabulary, grammar, speaking, and writing practices. So we, 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 you will see all of them uh, across the 10 weeks or the 10 video lessons, which you are going to have. So let's start with our first section, which is communicative English skills, which is the introduction to communication. Before we go to the depths of uh, English language communicative skills, we need to answer some important question regarding communications. What is communication? So communication is the imparting or exchanging of information by speaking, writing, or using other medium. So communication is everywhere. You communicate with family members, you communicate with your classmates, you communicate with your co-workers, or everywhere. So communication involves two important segments or sections. The first one is you have the sender every time you have communication. And on the other end, you have receiver. So the sender and the receiver has to have something in common. So communication is possible only when the sender sends some message and the receiver receives, whether it's in oral or written form. This is what we mean by communications. So one of the means of communication is language. We communicate in, in, in language, so that's why we need to learn English communication skills or communicative skills in English. So not every communication is really effective. So we need to learn how to make an effective communication. So what is effective communication then? Effective communication is the process of exchanging ideas thoughts, opinions, knowledge, and data, so that the message is received and understood with clarity and purpose. So clarity and purpose are the most important concepts in the concepts of effective communication, because we say that you have communicated effectively only if your communication is very clear and with a specific purpose. In other words, when we communicate effectively, both the sender and the receiver feel satisfied. There is no confusion, no ambiguity, no vagueness. You speak and the other party exactly receives what you would like to give him. If you write something, the reader will exactly understand and receive what you intended to send. Otherwise, if there is confusion, then that communication is not effective and that's so bad. That's why we need to learn how to make effective communication in your English language. To summarize what the communication process involves, you can have this image. So look at that. We have on the left side, the oral and written aspects, which the sender uses. And on the other end, you have oral and written communication with the receiver receives. So uh, the sending for example, somebody might write an email and send it. When is he sends the email, the receiver has to receive the email and understand what is written in the email. He must get it. But before the receiver gets it, or in order to the receiver receive the message and understand, there are barriers in between, in between the sender and the receiver. So those barriers might be a cultural barrier. For example, when you write a letter or an application letter for uh, some company or some person, you need to understand the culture. For example, if you are writing an email for a person who lives in 
Europe or Western in, in Western countries, United States or somewhere in Europe, the way they use their names is different than the way we name our we use our names in Ethiopia. For example, we use our first names all the time to, to communicate. But for them, they use their last name as a name when they have a formal communication. So unless otherwise you have that cultural awareness, you might have some hindrances or barriers for your communication. So it's not only the language, the grammar, the vocabulary, but also the cultural context is also important in your communication process. The second one is language, of course. All the things which you are going to study, including the grammar, the vocabularies, the speaking, reading, skills, intonations, pronunciations, all things will really impact us. And the third one is emotional. There should be emotional awareness. When you speak with a person, if it is an oral communication, you have to look at their eyes. If they really understood, if they are angry, if they are hesitant. So by looking at their facial expressions, you have to make sure that you have delivered your message according to their emotions. So uh, also the physical barriers also matters a lot. So the written form is in terms of written and the oral form is spoken. So uh, this is generally a communication process. If you have passed all the barriers and make sure that you delivered your message to the receiver, either in oral or written form, then we say that that communication process was effective. So why we are talking about the importance of this communication, effective communication, what is the importance? The importance, the first importance of effective communication is building strong relationship. If you have effective, effective communication skills, you can build strong relationships with whoever you are communicating with. It might be family members, your friends, or your co-workers, or classmates. You could have strong relationship. How? For example, in the context of active listening, if you are listening your friends while they are talking actively, you follow them line by line. You understand the entire story they are telling you. So you will develop the sense of empathy. Active listening to others demonstrates respect and understanding. Empathy allows you to connect with others on a deeper level and build trust. So if they are sharing you what happened to them and you really understand, because if you actively listening to them, then you will have a feeling that you are sorry for them. If they tell you something that they make them happy, you really understand in you will share their happiness or their sorrow, their sadness, their anger. So if you understand people's emotion, then you will continue to build your relationship with that person. So effective communication helps you to, to build. On the other side, if you don't have effective communication, you will have a really a bad kind of relationship with people which you are, you are communicating with because you don't understand them. You, don't, you are not active listener. The second one is clearer and concise expression of thought and ideas. So when you express your thoughts and ideas clearly, it, uh, it helps you to avoid misunderstanding. Misunderstanding is really very, very bad. You speak something, people understand in a different way. You speak something positive, people receive it as negative. You probably suggest some, some, some kind of suggestion, but they may, they may understand your suggestion as a critic or a bad criticism. So or are they sometimes consider it as an insult. So uh, if you specialize, if you master how to be effective in a communication, you can master to be clear and concise in your expression. Clarity fosters effective collaboration and cooperation. If people do not understand what you would like to say, they will not cooperate you in whatever stuff you are doing. So this is one of the importance. Let's go to the second importance. That is, it, it enhances professional success. If you, are, if you would like to be successful in a profession, then you need to have an effective communication. How? For example, effective communication in workplace. If you have clear communication with your team members or teamwork, 
you will be productive. If you are a team leader, if you efficiently communicate with your team members, then they will understand whatever you have communicated and it improves your teamwork and productivity. Second, effective communication skills are highly valued by employers. So if you are effectively communicating your coworkers, they will really understand what you like to say and they appreciate you. They follow you. They trust you. The other one is, you might be asked by your boss to make some kind of presentation. Presentation is also demands high level of effective communication because presentation is you will show them written aspects of your thought in PowerPoint slides and you will express them orally. So this demands presentation demands both your written and oral communication efficiency. If you are making spelling errors while you present for your company, that makes you disguised. So effective presentation skills help convey ideas persuasively. You can persuade them. You can make people accept what you like to get accepted. If you are making public speaking, you need to have a public speaking skills, which enhances your confidence and you can influence the people which you are presenting for. The third importance of effective communication is your academic excellence. If you are an effective communicator, it is correlated, directly correlated with uh, your academic excellence. Those people who are efficient communicator are excellent in their academic success. How? Because effective communication in classroom discussions matters a lot. So if the teacher is giving you one activity to discuss with your friends, if you don't have the skill to communicate efficiently, then you cannot do that. If you don't do that, your active participation is not presented, so you'll not be given the pointers which is allocated for your communication or your discussion with your friends. Also, you cannot present your questions in a clear manner for your friends if you don't have effective communication skills. So your academic excellence is directly related to your communication skills. But this is not only in terms of uh, oral, oral skills but also in written skills, whenever you are given assignment, if you don't do your assignment in an efficient way, in a correct way, then you may not get the pointers which are assigned for those assignments. Your teachers always wanted to make sure that you have communicated your ideas clearly and efficiently. You might study plenty of hours, but at the examination, if you don't exactly write out the answers accordingly, the questions, then you cannot get the, the entire answer. That's what makes the difference between effective communicator and not. So some people work very hard. They study plenty of hours, but at the examination, they score the least. But some other individuals may not give as much time for their study, but they are effective communicators. They communicate efficiently. They write exactly as what the teacher needs because they have the communication skills and they excel. They will have more greater grades than you have. So uh, effective communication is also important for your academic excellence. So the other one which we need to study is the strategies for improving communication skills. So I I'm sure everyone wants to improve his or her communication skills. But the question is how? What should you do? So we'll have some ideas here in this section. The first one is you have to be active listener. That's one of the strategies. What does it mean? Being present and attentive is one of the active listening skills or one of the strategies. Attentive means Whenever people are speaking, you have to give them your entire attention. You don't have to be distracted. You have to focus. When you are focused, you will be able to suck everything you learn and you'll process it immediately and you take out the important pointers from that uh, listening activity. That's number one. The other one is nonverbal 
cues and paraphrasing. So when people are speaking to you, you have to prove that you are listening them. You have to show them that you are following them. You have to make sure them that they feel that they are getting listened. Because if you don't show them that you are following them, they will not be motivated to give you more. The more you show them, the more you prove them that you are listening, the more they give you. They will be happy. They will really uh, trust you. Next time, they would like to tell you more because they know that you are a good listener. So active listening is very good. And one of the strategies to be active listener is to, to focus on nonverbal cues. You look at their face, uh, their facial expressions, and use body language. You probably nod your head. You show them the stir that, that you are understanding what they say. If you don't understand really, just tell them that you, you don't understand in some way and let them explain it, elaborate it in a way that you could understand. Or sometimes you need to paraphrase what they would like to say. And you say, you mean this? And you paraphrase it so that they will understand. They say, yes, this is what I'm saying. They continue. So that is how you can prove or uh, confirm that you are active listener. Let's move to the second strategy. That's verbal and nonverbal communication. So whenever you have communication, verbal means with language, nonverbal means with no language but facial expressions and gestures. So the communication you have verbal should always be accompanied by nonverbal communication. They cannot be separated in most of the time. So your communication should be clear and concise. Clear means there should not be ambiguity, there should not be confusion, it should not be vague. How can you make it clear and concise? Very simple. Try to use simple and precise language. Do not try to complicate it. Do not try to bring a very complex vocabulary that many people do not understand. So in order to message your ideas efficiently, use simple language. The other one is, organize your thought logically to, to enhance clarity. What does it mean? Before you speak something or before you write something, make sure you list your ideas in a piece of paper and then organize them. Start from simple, go to the complex. If you, do, if you feel that people do not understand some background information, you have to make sure that you give that background information first. If, if you feel that they don't understand a particular grammar or term, you have to start by defining that term before you proceed to the next stage. So sometimes, for example, if you are talking about communication, before you define what communication is, you cannot talk about a strategy of communication. So that's what it means by logical organization. So you have to organize your thoughts and ideas logically means start from simple and go to the complex. Start from the unknown and make it, make it known, go to the other stages. So that's one of uh, the strategies to make sure that you have a verbal, nonverbal communication clear and concise. The other one is body language and tone of voice. So make sure whenever you are speaking, make sure to, to maintain appropriate body language. Because the way you speak, the words which you utter from your mouth and the expression you have in your face should be matching. If they are contradictory, that's not good. Look, if you are trying to tell them some good news, you have to start by smiling. Because if you are not smiling, if you start by saying, let me tell you good news, but a frowning face, an angry face, it doesn't make sense. So your body language and your tone of voice should be appropriate for the context. Also, also your tone of voice means sometimes if there are cases where you have to speak slowly, with tone, with slow and smooth voice, some other time you have to speak in a louder voice. It depends on where you need. If you are angry, most of the time, you have to make sure that in a louder voice. But if you are, if you want to persuade people, you cannot use that kind of loud voice because it makes them even more angry than getting persuaded. 
Use tone of voice, express emotions and intentions appropriately. So that's what it means. This is the second strategy. Let's move to the third one. The third one is you have to have empathy and understanding for the people whom you are communicating with. That means in order to feel the empathy, which means in order to uh, understand their emotions, you need to put yourself on their shoes. That's what it means by putting oneself in other shoes. If you would like to understand how a person who loses his mother feels, you need to feel, you need to consider, you need to imagine that you are that person. So if you are putting your context in his context, then you really understand the person and you'll have a sense of sympathy. Understand different viewpoints to foster effective communication. So people are different in terms of culture, for example. So if you are talking to a person from a different culture, you have to try to understand the culture first. If you don't see from his own perspective or her own perspective, but try to understand from your own perspective, that's not working. If you are, if you are about to understand, or if you have to understand the person from the other culture, you need to understand the culture as well, at least. So that is a very important strategy to have a very successful communication with anyone. The other one is cultural sensitivity and respect. So make sure you respect every culture, whether you like it or not. If you don't respect people's culture, you cannot understand or you cannot have an empathy and understanding. Respect cultural differences and adapt communication accordingly. Sometimes you might think that it's so disgusting. One of their aspects might be disgusting, like what they eat might be very different from the culture of your food. But if you don't respect that, you cannot have a very genuine and positive conversation with the person. And avoid assumptions and stereotypes to promote inclusivity. This is another important, impo important point. Because stereotypes are those kinds of things which you, do, you judge people because of something. Like, for example, some people will judge people because of their color, their race, their ethnic group. They say, well, this person is come from this region. Therefore, they, this, this person has this attitude. This is good. This is bad. If you are judging people or if you are just making stereotypes, then whenever they start speaking, when you listen, you don't really accept them in a positive. You have to be neutral to understand what they would like to communicate. But if you already judge them, you either you have a very positive or a very negative uh, understanding. So what you understand is not from what they speak. Rather, you understand from what you already judged, from the stereotypes. Or you you understand your assumptions, not what they are speaking. So this is a point of uh, contradiction and misunderstanding most of the time. So make sure that you avoid your assumptions about the person whom you are speaking with, or you have to avoid stereotypes at all costs. The other strategy is conflict resolution. So communication is not without a problem. Sometimes you might be in conflict. So you need to learn some strategies how to avoid uh, conflict resolution. So effective communicators usually avoid contradiction or conflicts, or they are able to resolve conflicts. So active listening helps us understand different perspectives. Clearer communication facilitates finding common ground for resolving conflict. Because if you are listening efficiently, if you are listening clearly, then you understand where the problem lies. If even there is conflict or misunderstanding, you will understand where that misunderstanding lies. That is called finding a common ground. That's the first stage to solve conflicts. If you get a common ground, then you will focus on communication, communicating with the person in that common ground, and then you will build up and you try to gap, to fill the gap of that uh, misunderstanding. You have to seek areas of agreement. That's what I mean by common ground. 
whenever you are in conflict with somebody, it's not that you you disagreed completely. There might be like four pointers. You might be agreeing at two points at least or three pointers and you may disagree on the other point. So make sure you work hard on the points which where you agree so that you can solve the points where you don't agree. So that's how you resolve conflict. Focus on a shared goals to reach mutually beneficial solutions. So no, do not share a conflict point. Do not focus, do not overemphasize on what makes the conflict. Instead, try to find out the shared goals, the point is where you can work together. So that's how conflict resolution works and how communication improves. This could be for formal or informal contexts as well. So now we are about to, to complete uh, our communicative English skills, section one, which is the first lesson is about the meaning and the strategies of effective communication. Let us summarize by giving you the seven C's, seven pointers, which starts by C, which are considered to be uh, uh, the principles to a successful communication or effective communication. Number one, the first point or the first C which helps you to be effective communicator is clarity. What does it mean? Clear writing and clear presentations allow your audience to understand your intended message. Consider your choice of words structure to have your message as simple as possible. So that's what it means by clarity. So clarity is not about always about writing but clarity about speaking as well. So whenever you speak or whenever you write, make sure you have a very clear idea. Now look at these pictures. This picture is, imagine that in your mind, this is an idea. So the idea in this mind is so much complicated. It's not organized logically. So it's not clear. If the thing, if the idea is not clear in your mind, it's really hard to write it down clearly. Or to speak it out clearly. Instead, if you see the other side, if you organize your ideas in a very wonderful way, then it's very simple to make a clear writing and to speak clearly. So, clarity of thought, clarity of ideas is the beginning. The person whose ideas are disorganized in their mind, they can never make clear communication. Communication in oral or in written form. So clarity of thought is the first principle, the first C. Number two, completeness. Completeness. So whenever you would like to communicate something, either in written form or in oral form, you have to make sure that you have complete communication. Some people start some idea, but they end up in a different idea. So if you start talking about X, you have to complete about X before you go to Y or Z. So be sure to include all required components and answer all questions that your audience may have. Your message should be complete enough for your audience to take action and or respond. For this, you can have a piece of paper and jot down your pointers. All the pointers should be organized from uh, logically from simple to complex and make sure you have marked out important uh, terms and pointers and after you speak you make sure that you have covered all the pointers which you you have met so that helps you to make your uh, communication complete so sometimes you go to an office you like to explain your problems you started your problems and you might miss one of the most important problems or you may not tell them what exactly you would like to get from that office. So if you are really mentioning your problems but do not make the point about what you really need, that is not complete. So that is not the best strategy to have effective communication. And in that context, your communication was not effective. Let's go to the third one. Conciseness. What does it mean? It means try to be brief. When you can, so your message is not drawn out of confuse your audience. Avoid including lengthy explanations that do not add or improve your message. 
So, which means make your things very short and clear. Do not complicate. Do not bring, do not talk plenty of stuff which are not related, which are not purposeful. Try to be purposeful. Focus on your goal. Speak only those things which are directly related to your goal, which helps you make the people understand your purpose, your intention, your ideas. So that is what it means by brief and concise. Number four, concreteness. Concreteness. Ideas which we are communicating should be concrete. Concrete as an opposition of abstractness or imaginary. That means whenever you start to write or to speak something, make sure you have all your stuff concrete. Reinforce your words with facts and figures to eliminate the possibility of your audience misunderstanding or questioning your message. That's what it means by concrete. So look, when people speak, they speak either from the facts or from their imagination. Most of the time, if you are communicating people based on your imagination, but not with facts, people will not seriously listening to you. Because we are living in a scientific community, information community. So all the things which we speak should be based on either scientific facts or information. Otherwise, if you are simply talking about your imaginations, your ideas, your attitude, that this is not really acceptable. That's not a good form of communication. Some people, you might have heard them, you might listen to them speaking a lot, but most of what they are speaking is of their ideas, their attitudes, their opinions, their imaginations, not real factors, not, not real factors, not concrete factors. In that case, it's all the waste of time. It's all garbage. It's trash. So make sure that people will not judge that you are speaking trash and garbage. So make sure that you have all the facts and make your presentation, your, your substance or concrete. The other one is correctedness. Sometimes you might be giving them a factual claim or a factual evidence, but the fact you are presenting is not correct, that's another problem. You cannot have really good communication by giving them an incorrect information. This is very important because some people might be so bold. They might say, well, research says this or that. But if whatever they're talking is not really a correct source, People may not understand what you are saying, may not trust you. Make sure that the message you are sending is correct, containing accurate information. Utilize reliable sources. When providing this information for others, be sure your grammar, spelling, punctuation, everything is correct as well. So, especially we are in, in a time of uh, information in social media, so we always get information all the time from the social media. But unless otherwise, you are measuring and make sure that they are correct, they are real, they are true, they are not fake, then you cannot communicate them, you cannot use them in any context. If people say simply, well, I get this idea from uh, TikTok or from uh, Telegram or Facebook or YouTube, and therefore this is this, you might not sure who has posted that source, that information? People might generate that information uh, based on artificial intelligence. So it might be a generated image or generated text, or it might look like an official letter from some company, but it might be uh, Photoshop. So if you are not sure about whether that information is correct or not, but if you simply present it as it is, your communication will not be effective. People will always question whatever you are presenting. They say, well, this guy is always relied on social media, so how can we trust him? So people, if, you don't, if they don't trust you, they don't understand what they say, they don't accept what you say, they don't trust what you say, and then communication is broken. 
That's not effective communication. That's another important aspect of uh, uh, effective communication, correctness. The sixth one is courtesy. Courtesy means in a professional ethics. So respect others and remember that your communication reflects directly on you. If you are really rude when you communicate, people will not understand, but they will judge you that you are rude. So you are not professional. You don't have the, the courtesy. Be sure your, your overall tone and approach is always professional and courteous to others who may be hearing or reading it. So you might be a boss in one of your companies. So whenever you are speaking, if you do not demonstrate or have that kind of ethics or politeness, if you are so rude, if you do not care about the words which you are using, people will judge you based on uh, your professional standards. So you don't have any courtesy, you don't have a professional ethics, you are not professional, so your communication will be broken. People will not be impressed with what you are speaking. And the last one is creativity. So every time, whenever you attempt to communicate with people, you have to be creative. Because the more you created ways to make sure that you have clear communication, then people will understand, will, uh, will communicate you efficiently. So that means use your voice to interpret and relay information in a way that suits you the best. Be creative in your approach to the message and how you portray it to keep your audience interested and allow for a portrayal to reflect you. So make sure that you, your audience are interested in your presentation. If you are a teacher, you have to be an effective communicator. Make sure that your students are always happy to listen what you teach. How? By making your presentation in a creative way. Try to use illustrations or pictures or teaching aids. Or even if you are not a teacher, if you are presenting your ideas to your business clients, you have to make sure that you have presentations that infographics and uh, images and forms and charters and make sure that you created things which helps you to make your ideas clear so that you will have a more efficient and effective communication. So creativity really matters a lot. So finally, uh, you have to ask your, yourself before you go to the English communicative skills, section one, listening text, you have to ask questions like, where are you right now? What kind of communication skills you have right now? Are you able to listen native language speakers right now? Try to assess, try to diagnose, try to see where you are. Are you able to understand your classroom lecture meaningfully? Are you really listening exactly what I'm uh, lecturing right now? That's one of uh, the questions which you have to ask yourself to, in order to diagnose your listening skills. Let's go to uh, your speaking skills. Are you able to express your thoughts and ideas in English in any way? If somebody approaches you which is not speaking your language but only English, are you able to express your ideas? Do you have your listeners are able to understand your spoken utterances? So is your spoken utterances audible? How about your accent, your pronunciations, your intonations? You have to ask it. If you feel that there is some gap, then this is the time to fill it in this course. In, in terms of your reading skills, are you able to understand what you read in English? So reading is not like uttering words, but understanding what is written, whether it's an email or a fiction or non-fiction, anything you read, you need to understand. So what is your capacity in that way? What kind of reading strategies do you use when reading for different purposes? So there are different strategies like skimming, scanning, in-depth reading. So, and finally, about your writing skills. Are you able to express your thoughts in written English? Can you simply take application letters and send it? Can you compose an email and send in a formal context for your professors or for your bosses? 
So do you have necessary grammar knowledge to be able to use in writing skills? Do you have the vocabularies? So these things are questions which you need to ask yourself so that to understand where you are and start from there to improve your communication skills in English. So this will bring the end of uh, our lessons for today. And next week, uh, we will be proceeding to the second section, that's lesson two on listening skills. And thank you so much. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us in one of the following address. Thank you. Thank you.